What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18 beta 2 for registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, Apple also released iPadOS 18 beta 2, watchOS 11 beta 2, macOS Sequoia beta 2, tvOS 18 beta 2, and visionOS 2 beta 2. But of course in this video we are focusing primarily on iOS and iPadOS 18 beta 2. So you can see the size of this update came in at just under one and a half gigabytes on my 15 Pro Max. So I would expect a pretty large update even coming from iOS 18 beta 1. So 1.44 gigabytes. Let's check out the new build number for this update and our settings general about. The new build is 22A5297F. So we went from an M at the end of the build number in beta 1 to an F here in beta 2. And if we go down to the modem firmware, we also received a pretty large update here as well. So we went from 2.11.0 to 2.13. Point zero. So a nice update if you were struggling with cell connectivity or anything related to the modem that could be resolved with beta 2. Okay, so now what's new here in iOS 18 beta 2? And the first thing you'll probably notice just from looking at my home screen is one of my top complaints that I've talked about in every iOS 18 video so far, and that is the App Store icon. So we finally have a dark mode icon for the App Store to go along with all of the other first party dark applications. We also have a slight change to the control center. So if you swipe down to go to the control center and you tap on the power icon in the top right, you'll notice that nothing happens. Whereas before in beta one, if you tapped on that, it would go ahead and prompt you to turn off your device. So I believe that this is not a bug. I believe this is intentional. That way we can prevent accidental taps of the power icon there. So I've actually, you know, put my device into that mode where it locks it many times. So now you have to press and hold on the power icon and you will see you have a little animation there and then it prompts you to slide to power off and while we're in that control center there's also a slight change to the Shazam icon so the recognize music toggle before when you haptic pressed on that icon you had this little menu but now if you haptic press on that icon you get a much more simple menu than we had previously also in the control center you'll notice that in beta 1 the hover text icon was just blank but now it shows the glyph for hover text and then also the search is much better Better in control center now. So when you search for something like personal hotspot, for example, it does not pull up airplane mode, cellular data, all of that, it pulls up just personal hotspot like you were searching for it. So it seems like search has been improved for adding control center toggles. And also the personal hotspot glyph icon has changed as well. So there's now a slash through the personal hotspot, whereas before it just showed as two chains linking. On the home screen, if you haptic press and then go to edit up in the top left and then go to customize, you'll see that we have a new glyph icon to the right of customize. So it's now a brush, over top of an iPhone, whereas before it was just a paintbrush. Also in the top left of this section, we have the little sun right there, which changes the brightness of the background from light and dark mode. And you can now do that from the automatic section. Before that was there, but you could only do it, I believe, when you were in dark mode. So now you can do it no matter which one of these options you select. iOS 18 beta 2 also brings iPhone mirroring, which is one of the biggest features included in iOS 18 and especially macOS Sequoia. So what this does is it allows you to control and see notifications from your Mac when your iPhone is locked. So you can go into your settings and then into general and then airplay and continuity. And you'll notice that we have a new section here for iPhone mirroring. And it says this allows you to use your iPhone and receive iPhone notifications from your nearby Mac. So when you tap into there, that's where you can see a list of devices or Macs that are able to you know, control your iPhone when it's locked. And you can see that my iPhone is mirroring to my Mac right here when my iPhone is locked and I'm able to control the iPhone from my Mac, which is that that alone is awesome. And you can go to the home screen with this button and into the app switcher as well. You can receive notifications on your Mac when you get them on your iPhone and you get a nice little sound to go along with that as well. It's pretty awesome. I will say like it's not fully there yet. You can't drag and drop things. At least I've not been able to get that to work. So it's not fully functional yet. Of course, it is still a beta. This is the first beta that we've seen that introduced, but it's pretty awesome. And I can really see myself using this all the time. And this is the notification you'll see on the lock screen of the iPhone that's currently being mirrored to the Mac. And you'll also see this once you're done 
mirroring. So it says iPhone was used from Mac, and then you can go into settings and maybe remove that device if it was not a device that you maybe wanted it to be connected to. And if you guys wanna see a full video on iPhone mirroring with the iPhone and the Mac, let me know in a comment down below because I think it's really useful for typing out long emails and just, I don't know, using a mouse and a keyboard for your iPhone is pretty cool, especially when it's already on your Mac. So let me know if you wanna see that video. Now, another big change in iOS 18 beta 2 is this new toggle under settings messages and under the text messaging setting you'll notice that there's a new toggle for RCS messaging so yes RCS now has a toggle in iOS 18 beta 2 however I have not been able to get this to work so Apple actually mentions in the release notes they say this existing RCS one-to-one -one or group chats will downgrade to SMS even if RCS is still registered so it looks like rcs is there as a toggle but it's not fully functional just yet i have tested this multiple times and i've tried force quitting out of the messages application which apple says is a workaround for this bug but i still you know had people tell me that the video quality is bad when i sent it to their android device so rcs hopefully we see that very soon but as of now not fully functional in beta 2. now ios 18 beta 2 was also supposed to bring share play screen sharing but i've not been able to get that to work so what this is is if you facetime somebody and you share your screen or they share their screen you can control their iPhone from your iPhone. So this is great if you maybe have grandparents who need help with something and you know they call you and you can control their iPhone and perform the task for them. So I've not been able to get this to work, but it is supposedly in iOS 18 beta two. And if you head into the settings and go anywhere where you have default app icons showing, so for example, in the privacy and security section, and then you change your phone into dark mode. So if you go into dark mode on both of these devices, you'll notice that the dark mode icons now show up here on the left so anywhere in the settings where you have default icons like calendar contacts health home kit all of those show the dark mode icon for those select apps whereas before it would still show the light mode icons for calendars contacts health, home kit, all of those. So a nice minor improvement there that makes a big difference in the settings. If we head into our settings and go down to the Siri section, unfortunately, we do not have the new Siri animation. As you can see, it just shows as normal. And also if you did do the kind of hacky way to get the new Siri animation in beta one, that is now dead with beta two and no longer works. So anyways, in our settings here for the Siri section, you'll notice up top that not only is this platter smaller, but also the description has changed. So it used to say what it it said for a long time up here before in beta one but now in beta two it says siri is an intelligent assistant that helps you find information and get things done so it seems like apple is kind of gearing up for the apple intelligence features to be in this section and settings and you'll also notice that in this section there's no more press side button for siri so i'm not sure why that is not here in beta 2 but it's missing and then also if you go to listen for there's a new toggle down here that has no description it just says talk to siri so that is a new one and if you turn that off and on nothing changes there's no description and there's also a change in the face id and passcode section and settings as well so it's also been a bit condensed so now you can see the verbiage up there has been changed in beta 2. in the photos application if you go to the filters in the bottom left hand corner and tap on that and then go to view options there's a new option for show shared with you and a new glyph icon next to that that was not there in beta 1. if we head over to the lock screen and haptic press right here and go to customize into our lock screen you'll notice that now when we add the open app shortcut so right here the open app and then we tap on it it pops up right away you actually don't even have to tap it prompts you right away so that was broken in beta one you would have to basically go out of this and then back into it and then tap again but now the open app shortcut for the lock screen is working as expected now a big change for the ipad is that ipad os 18 beta 2 includes the alternative app stores and other eu changes so all the changes that we saw for the eu with ios 17 and those changes didn't come to the ipad they are now coming to the iPad. So this includes the third-party app stores and all of the other changes to Safari and the app store. If we head into our accessibility settings, the music haptics icon has been changed. So before in beta one, it was blue. Now in beta two, it is red. Also in the accessibility settings, if you go into eye tracking, there's a new description underneath of it. So it's a bit lengthier. So it's now two sentences instead of just one short sentence about what it does. 
else. Also, we have this new placeholder for our Apple account. If our photo does not show up, it's no longer blank. It just shows this new icon with the Apple in there. And if we go into our iCloud settings, the badge in the top right has changed. So it used to say subscriber edition. Now it says subscriber iCloud. So still a completely meaningless badge in my opinion, but that is still there. Just the text has been slightly tweaked. Also a feature that was in beta one, but I didn't notice until beta two is inside of our settings, display and brightness, and then down to auto lock. And if you set this to never, there's a new warning at the bottom that says your iPhone may use more energy with this setting. Now, as far as the release notes go, there are a lot of details in these release notes. So I'm not gonna go through everything, but there are quite a few known issues as expected. Some of these are leftovers from beta one, but there are also quite a few specific new features and also a lot of known issues. So a lot of the known issues are related to the visuals on the home screen. Like when you switch from light mode to dark mode, some things don't change over. Apple is aware of that along with a lot of the other UI based bugs that we've been talking about since beta one. And for the camera, I did want to mention two resolved issues that I've had. So the portrait capture after boot might take longer than expected expected to finish. That was something I faced in beta one, along with camera functions might take up to two minutes to work after booting an iPhone or iPad that has also worked. And there are also fixes for document scanning and for portrait mode preview. And there are three control center resolved issues. So there's a bug fix for the empty pages in control center that was given a lot of people issues in beta one. So now the empty pages no longer stay there after exiting the edit mode. And then there's a fix for control widgets and also for the voice memos control. Also the emoji tap backs are broken in group chats in iOS 18 beta two, specifically with SMS messages. So if you have an SMS group chat, I've noticed that the tap backs are now broken, even though those were working properly in beta one. And then also screen time is still broken in iOS 18 beta two, and it's actually gotten worse than beta one. So if you go to your settings and try to go into screen time, it just freezes. You can't do anything on your device, and then it will eventually crash and go back to the home screen. If you don't do it manually, it will just crash out of settings and go back to the home screen. So screen time still broken in beta two. And there are going to be a few other bugs as well, since we still are in an early beta for iOS 18. Now I did want to touch on the Geekbench scores because if we go into my history here, you can see I ran a Geekbench test shortly after installing. So we scored a 2792 on the single core and a 6759 on the multi-core. So a very low multi-core, especially compared to our last run just three days ago. You can see we got a 7272 versus a 6759. So clearly an anomaly because I was, you know, uploading to iCloud. My iCloud was backing up and everything like that. So that's to be expected when you download a update and, you know, run these scores shortly after. So I will be running another test at the end of the week to see how it compares to a later run of iOS 18 at beta one, which is this one right here. But of course I will continue using iOS 18 beta two throughout the week to see how it compares to beta one. And I will touch on that in my Apple weekly episode coming on Saturday. And the same goes with the battery life. Of course, it's way too early to tell how battery life is so far, but a good way to judge early is to see what my battery percentage is now compared to when I started the video. So 80, 4% now you guys will have to go back to the beginning and let me know how the battery life was or what the battery life was at the beginning and how much I lost throughout this video. Now, as far as when to expect the next beta, I would expect to see iOS 18 developer beta three in about two weeks from now. So that puts us at around July 8th or July 9th. So Apple does not typically release betas on Monday. So today was, you know, a, a difference an anomaly, but I would expect to see beta three most likely on a two Tuesday, but from now on, we can't really rule out Mondays anymore, I guess. So I'm going to say either the 8th or the 9th is when we can expect to see developer beta three. And then as far as the first public beta for public beta testers, you're probably going to see the first public beta around at the same time. So either that week or even the following week, the week of July 15th, but I do not see the public beta coming anytime after the week of the 15th. So it's going to be within one of those two weeks. And then as far as any Apple intelligence features, I know some people have been asking me about Apple intelligence. We do not see anything new or relevant to Apple intelligence in this beta two update, but we should start seeing some of those features in beta three or later. Now we're not going to see everything until 2025. So a lot of the really advanced and the really awesome AI features from Apple, 
Apple are not going to come until 2025. So I would not expect those, but we are going to see the new Siri UI and a lot of the Siri changes as well coming in later betas because they will be in the iOS 18 final update. So nothing here in beta two though, related to Apple intelligence, unfortunately. So that is iOS 18 beta two. I'm sure there are even more changes in the update and I will be exploring those and finding those throughout the week. And I will share those additional changes in my Apple weekly episode on Saturday as I always do. But if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS 18 beta update videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.